So that's why I cover this first. It's we, we can't do trigonometric ratios and trigonometry, which is chapter 12, which is our last unit of the year, without knowing how to do Pythagorean theorem. So that's why I always like to start the first day with just Pythagorean theorem. And then uh, we will spend three days, three different lessons on 12.1 because there's three things going on in 12.1. And then your quiz, um, Monday the 6th, it's on, it's on a Monday. Okay, and I will keep, I'll remind you, not next Monday, the following Monday. That will be um, on Pythagorean theorem problems and all of 12.1, okay? All right, so, uh, and, and for this part, you don't have to write all of this down, just some history. There was this guy, Pythagoras. He was an old Greek mathematician who discovered this relationship about right triangles, okay? Um, and so just to be clear what a right triangle is, it's a triangle where I remember myself honestly learning about this in fifth grade. I, I'll never forget it. And, and um, I remember the teacher asking, you know, what do you think a triangle with a right angle in it is called? And I barked out as a little fifth grader thinking I was being smart, not smart like, you know, intelligence part, but being a smart, you know what? And then I ended up being right. I'm like, a right triangle. And she's like, yes. And I was like, oh. I wasn't trying to be, you know, correct. I was trying to be kind of jerky. And I ended up being right. So anyway, that's what a right that's triangle. Why you became a math teacher. Yeah, that's it. It was all because of my fifth grade experience. No, that wasn't why. But um, I just, for, for whatever reason, it's like I was trying to be funny and I was actually <clears throat> right. So that's how I remember the first time I learned about right triangles. Okay, uh, it's basically a triangle that has a right angle, and a right angle is 90 degrees. Okay, um, and so in general, here's what we're talking about. We'll see a little symbol anytime you have a right triangle, wherever the wherever the right angle is, they'll put this little box. So um, you'll know for sure that it is 90 degrees. Now, I had a student a few years back sent me a picture of a triangle. And this angle was 89 degrees, just to irritate me, right? And you look at it, because you, you can't tell. It looks like a right angle. And if you didn't know any better, you'd look at the picture and say, oh yeah, that's a right triangle for sure. Well, it wasn't. And so it was, it was a great reminder that one, they either have to tell you, label the angle, and then tell you that it equals 90 degrees, or they put the little box in there. Do not assume anything from a picture just the picture itself. They have to provide that information to you, okay? Now, um, there's some notation here, and on the next slide, I'm gonna talk about those, those things, okay? Uh, where is it, here we go. Okay, so here's that triangle, or, and, and, and the same picture. Okay, the longest side that is directly across from the right angle is called the hypotenuse. So if, if you're ever not sure which side is which? The hypotenuse is a, is a unique side. And it is always the longest side, and it is always directly opposite from the right angle. And when I say opposite, what I mean is that I could take, if I started at the right angle and I drew a line, I would hit it. Okay, that's what I mean by opposite from the angle. Okay, so that's how I know that it's the hypotenuse. The other two sides are just known as legs. And there's a short leg and a long leg. Sometimes the legs could be the same length, um, but usually they're, they're one is shorter than the other. Okay. So when, in terms of terminology, when we talk about those things, the hypotenuse is really the important one. That's the one we'll use the most. The other two sides is legs. We won't talk about that phrasing as much, but it'll come up every once in a while. Um, so, for, so here's what the Pythagorean theorem actually is. Okay. So if I have a right triangle, what Pythagoras figured out, and remember, this is ancient Greek. Greece, ancient Greece. <laughs> Not ancient Greek, that's language. Ancient Greece, there wasn't anything to do. They weren't, you know, making a TikTok or something. You know, they, they figured out, and this was, this was foundational in construction. Right? Because if, if you can guarantee that you have a right angle, 
then you can guarantee that the wall is square with the floor. It's not gonna tip over. Or the ceiling is square with the wall and it's not gonna cave in. So right angle or trigonometry gets used in construction all the time. And because Pythagoras figured this out, that's why some of the most amazing, beautiful buildings that have stood for thousands of years are standing because they figured this stuff out. And what he figured out is if you take one of the legs and square it and you add it to the other leg squared, that that will equal the hypotenuse squared. And that works every time. And that also guarantees if the, if the sides fall into this pattern, that guarantees that this is a right angle. So if any of you, any of you have friends or family that are in construction, they use trig all the time. Um, and again, to be clear, A and B are the legs. C is the hypotenuse, just kind of being redundant with it, maybe. Believe it or not, this is really our first foray into really higher level math. All the algebra that we've been doing is preparing us to be able to do higher level math, but now we're finally kind of getting into it. Um, and that way we can start using this stuff to apply it to learn other things. Uh, but this is the start of that. All right, so we're going to go through two examples, okay? So one of the things that's going to happen is they'll give you two sides. You have to find the third. All right, so in this case, we have a triangle. Um, the short side is five centimeters. The short leg, I should say, is five centimeters. The longer leg is 12 centimeters, and C is the hypotenuse. And I know that not because it's labeled C, okay, because they could label it anything. But I know that because it's directly opposite um, the, the right angle, again. So, again, if you wanted to, you could be like, oh, okay, yeah, that's the hypotenuse over there, directly opposite. Now, what you're going to learn as you start working through these problems is that there's sometimes shortcuts. We're not going to do the shortcut, yeah, shortcut quite yet, but you are going to need calculators for this. And sometimes the problem is going to ask you to round to the nearest hundredth or whatever. And so there, therefore, you are going to have a decimal. And other times it's going to say, give an exact answer. <coughs> Bless you. And when it's an exact answer, if it doesn't come out to be an integer, um, or sorry, or a whole number, it'll be a whole number, um, then you're talking about a simplified radical, which we've done in the past. So... The thing that I like to do first as I get started on this is actually write the Pythagorean theorem down. Maybe it would help if I wrote it down correctly. There we go. Okay. So what goes in for A? Five. Does it have to be five? Can it be 12? No. Does it matter? No. Is five squared plus 12 squared equal 12 squared plus five squared? No. It is. So the answer is it doesn't matter. Do we typically make A the short one? Yes, but you don't have to, okay? So long as whatever you square and whatever you square added together are both of the legs, it doesn't matter, all right? So I've got five squared. I'm gonna do it that way too. I don't know C, okay? Now, I'm not gonna figure out 20, uh, I'm not gonna figure out five squared and 12 squared yet. I wanna show you something that might be helpful to make, uh, to allow you to have maybe a little bit of a shortcut. In order to solve for C, eventually, what am I going to have to do here? Square root. I got to undo that squaring, right? So I could actually do that now. Let's square root it, and I can square root both sides. Notice how I put it all under one on the left. I didn't use individual ones. The whole thing is under, it's like an S5. Okay. Now, normally when you square root, what do we have to do to both sides with the square root? What has to be there? Plus or, minus. plus or minus, right? There should be a plus or minus here. Why do you think we don't need a minus? Yes, exactly. You can't have negative centimeters. The length of something, you can't take a tape measure and pull it out and go, oh, negative seven centimeters. Like, that's not a thing. So in, in the case of a real situation like this, we don't need the plus or minus. Okay? And that's the reason why. Okay, now what I would, here's what I'm talking about with the shortcut, right? What you can do is literally 
type this into your calculator just like that. I don't need to know that you know that this is 25 plus 144, I don't. You can type it into the calculator just like this and get your answer, and I'm okay with that. If you want to, feel free, no problem. Sometimes you're gonna have to. It's gonna depend on what the problem says. Okay, in this case, uh, what did this give you? Did it give you a whole number? What was it? 13, okay. And be careful with this. I'm going to warn you about this right now. Is that it? 13, that's the answer? Centimeters. Okay. Let's say it didn't have centimeters on it. I'm going to, I'm going to look here real quick. Okay. If it didn't have centimeters, let's pretend for a minute it wasn't there. Uh, actually, I'm going to make it go away. Because this will happen. No, I'm not. Let's try this one. I think this will let me do it. Let's pretend it didn't have centimeters on it. It was just like that. What would we write instead? 13. 13 what? Meters. Nope. What? Units. Units. Very good. Okay, so when there is no label, when there's no label, okay, it's still a measurement. I still need you to give it a label. So when there's no label, or no unit of measurement, be sure to write units. All right, here's another one. This one's a little different. Why is this one different? What makes this different? Obviously the numbers are different. It's feet instead of centimeters, fine. Because we know the C and the... We know the hypotenuse. What we don't have is one of the legs. And so what's interesting about this, and this will always be true, that there's going to be a different kind of approach to it. Not initially. Okay, when we start, it kind of works the same. All right, I've got, you could say 6 squared plus B squared equals 19 squared. But you know what we did on the other problem? We, we squared root it right away. You can't do that here. What do you have to do first before you can square root? Get it by itself. Get what by itself? The B. Get the B by itself. So what do I have to do before I can get the B squared by itself? Move the six squared. Yeah, I gotta move the six squared. So what happens when they give you the hypotenuse and you're looking for a leg is what's gonna happen is you're gonna end up with some subtraction. Okay, so I'm just going to move that 6 squared to the other side, right? And again, I could, I could write that in there. Minus 6 squared, minus 6 squared. All right, so now we're okay. Now we can take the square root and we'll be in good shape. And I can solve for B. So the, the process is a little bit different. But as a general rule, what we can say is, is that if I'm looking for a leg, there's going to be subtraction involved. If I'm looking for a hypotenuse like we were in the last problem, there's gonna be addition involved, okay? Now, in this problem, I don't think this comes out to be a nice number. Why don't you try to figure that out and let's see what you end up with. Okay, what is it, 18 point what? 027756. 027756, let's just go there for now, okay? 5638. How about let's just forget about it. <laughs> All right. Look, here's the, here's the problem, right? Now you got to go, what are the directions telling me to do? Do they want me to round to the nearest whatever? Or do they want me to come up with an exact answer that is a, uh, a simplified radical? Well, let's look at both, okay? And, and so there's, obviously there's no directions here. So let's say round to the nearest hundredth. Okay, well round to the nearest hundredth is going to give me 18.03 feet. That's one option. Okay, if it wanted exact, now I have to know what the square root is. So I do have to do 19 squared minus 6 squared without the square root. So we need to figure that out. So what is 19 squared minus 6 squared?
324? Five. Five? Agree? 325? All right. Is that simplified? What definitely, what is a perfect square that definitely goes into that? What? 25, right? 25 is a perfect square. It definitely goes into that. So let's break that up a little bit. So this is the square root of 25 times the square root of 13. So this is 5 times the square root of 13 feet. That is exact. Okay. Now, if I'm building something, is 18.03 feet more useful? Of course it is. But I'm telling you on the worksheets that you're about to work on, sometimes it's going to say round to the nearest tenth or hundredth or whatever. And sometimes it can say, give me an exact. That's exact. Okay. So you need to know how to do both. And it's something we've been talking about all year. Make sure you're following directions. Make sure you're reading the directions and you'll be in good shape. Okay. All right. We've got one more thing to talk about because this is going to be covered on your worksheet. Are there any questions before we move on to the next piece? Not that difficult. Yes. So we got 325 because 19 squared minus 6 squared. Yep. That's where the 325 came from. Yes. Well, uh, yes, but so the, the, the B, this B ends up equaling this. So yes, it's on there, but then we can still take the square root of B squared, that's still B. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Next thing is something called Pythagorean triples. Okay. This is absolutely 100% used in construction all the time. Okay. Pythagorean triples are sort of known sets of three numbers that always fit into the Pythagorean theorem. And they use them to help ensure that we have floors and walls that are square or ceilings and walls that are square. When we say square, that we, what we're saying is that it forms a right angle, okay? So here's what you need to know about a Pythagorean triple. Basically, it's three numbers that you can put into the Pythagorean theorem that make it true. Right? The very first problem that we did, 5, 12, and the, we found the hypotenuse was 13. 5, 12, 13 is a Pythagorean triple. Because when I put those numbers into the Pythagorean theorem, it works. Okay? If I put 6, 19, and 5 times the square root of 13 in, we just figured out that that it works. Those are Pythagorean triples. Okay? And so what you're going to have to do in your homework, and you want to get good at look, recognizing it, okay, is say, all right, three, four, five, so those are Pythagorean triples. Well, in your homework, you're going to have to prove it. Well, the way that you prove it is that you plug three and four in for A and B and five for C. Why do I plug five for C? Because it's the biggest one, right? The hypotenuse has to be the biggest side. So the biggest number has to go in for C. And so in your homework, on your quiz, on your test, if you're going to prove that 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple, all you got to do is plug it. Okay? And this is the, bless you, this is the proof. This is the evidence. This is the justification. Why 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. I just plug it in the formula, and I show that it works. 25 equals 25. Good to know. So therefore, this is a Pythagorean triple. Proved it. That's the evidence. That's the work. That's the justification. That's what you need to show. Now, the same thing is true if it's not. You plug it in, and if it doesn't, if the left-hand side doesn't equal the right-hand side, then no dice. Not a Pythagorean triple. It could be a triangle. Just the one angle is not going to be 90 degrees. Don't try to build a building with it. It's going to fall. Okay, so, for example, five, six, seven, it's not. If you build a five foot by six foot by seven foot triangle, it's not going to be a right angle. That, that angle between five and six is not going to be a right angle. And today I can't tell you what it's going to be. 
Later on in this chapter, I'll be able to tell you what that angle is going to be, and you'll be able to tell us too. So again, here's how you prove it. You plug it in. 5 squared plus 6 squared, that's 25 plus 36, that's 61. 7 squared is 49. Obviously, those two things are not equal, which proves that 5, 6, 7 is not a Pythagorean triple. It's that simple. Pythagorean triples work in the Pythagorean theorem. If it's not a triple, it won't work. And you just have to provide the evidence to justify that. Like in order? Like no, it doesn't have to go in order. But what has to happen is that the biggest number has to be C. So I could have said 6 squared plus 5 squared. Oh, or I could have said 4 squared plus 3 squared. But the, but the 5 on the left has to be the biggest one. It is the biggest one. And so it has to be C. And on the right, 7 has to be C because it's the biggest one out of 5, 6, and 7. Okay?